6.2, we're going to talk about global energy consumption. You want to be able to describe the different trends in energy consumption around the world. Starting with some basic ones, we see that developed countries have more energy resources than developing countries. So that should come as no surprise because that's part of how they're able to become developed. That's how they're able to become industrialized because they have that access to, to fuel, mostly in the form of fossil fuels. So then as we see a country go through industrialization, so as developing countries become more developed, we see their reliance on fossil fuels increase. And as a whole, as the world becomes more industrialized, the demand for energy increases. And so it should come then as no surprise that our use of fossil fuels increases as well. So this first graph looks at the global primary energy consumption since 1800. And for a long time, uh, our main source of energy came from, fo or not fossil fuels, uh, biofuels. So we used wood to cook our food, to heat our homes. Anything that we needed energy for came from biofuels. But then with the discovery of coal, we see that massively increased our, our use of energy. Um, and the most of our energy to this day still comes from fossil fuels. Our use of biofuels hasn't really changed all that much. If we zoom in a little bit more to 1965 up to the present day, again, we see that um, this is consumption supply source of the world. Again, the big takeaway here is our massive use of fossil fuels. That's going to correlate pretty well, by the way, to levels of carbon dioxide when we get to climate change. And even though there has been an increase of renewables and uh, cleaner forms of energy, we still don't see them surpass fossil fuels by any means. Um, so this is going to become important because when we talk about uh, you know, why can't we just switch to these renewable forms of energy? It's really hard. It creates, um, we need to create just a whole new system to replace these fossil fuels. And it's, it's a difficult endeavor. And then it was even once more looking at just the United States. Again, we see um, same trend. Most of our energy comes from fossil fuels. Uh, within renewable energy, most of it, or uh, the biggest part of it is um, hydroelectric followed by various forms of biomass. And then wind power, solar, and geothermal don't really make up that much. But again, it is increasing. So next I want to talk about what determines those choices. Uh, when we talk more about each source individually, I'll go into more specific examples. But one really big thing will always be cost. How much does it take to build and operate versus how much energy is then actually created? How much can be sold? And if it's not positive or if it doesn't create as much um, revenue as other resources or other sources of energy, it's going to be really hard to get that, that going. And also, it's important to note that um, the same uh, the same fuel or the same energy source is not going to cost the same worldwide. It depends on availability, regulations, uh, all sorts of things that uh, determine the cost of the, the building and the operating um, that have to be uh, considered as well. So a couple of examples of that. Solar is more likely to cost less at places near the equator where the sunlight is more direct and then they get more solar energy and they can sell that more. Uh, we also see that the cost of fossil fuels varies a lot just based on the quality of the fuel, how easy it is to extract from the earth, and then um, the availability of that fossil fuel. And this graph has a lot going on. Oh, um, so I'll walk you through each part before talking about some of the conclusions. So First thing it shows is the different um, different sources of energy. So biomass, geothermal, hydropower, two different types of solar power, and then two different types of wind power. It shows the weighted average, uh, this line right here, and then it also shows the variation of cost from the cheapest to the most expensive. And then it also shows that in comparison to fossil fuels, the cheapest and the most expensive that fossil fuels can be. Now we see a lot of variation, especially in things like hydropower and solar power, um, as far as where it's cheap and where it's expensive. And that, again, comes down to availability. 
But an important thing to see is that for the most part, these are all pretty cost competitive with, with fossil fuels. And again, that looks at, um, you know, how much energy is created and how much it costs to build. Um, for the most part, it's all kind of about the same. Um, that being said, not always. We see solar power, still, uh, there's a lot of variation in solar power. Um, although the weighted average has come down a lot and it continues to decrease as we get better technology. There are some things that are increasing in cost um, marginally, but still, for instance, like hydropower. So hydropower, you know, might be becoming more expensive because all the major rivers have been dammed. And so it's more expensive to build a hydropower plant because, you know, again, it, there's only so many places that we can put a dam. Um, but I just thought that was interesting to consider. Another thing that we have to take into consideration is health and safety. So what are the chances of accidents? What pollutants will be created? Um, and a huge thing that we have to think about, um, and they're going to talk about a lot, is climate change. It's a reality that fossil fuels have led to global warming, and all that is part of climate change. Um, and it's not just about, you know, hotter days, cooler days, whatever, but it has really significant impacts on things like food and water, uh, coastal communities. Um, it's a factor of extreme weather events and can make disease distribution worse. And it's really hard to go into all the effects of climate change in just one bullet point. And so I promise we'll talk way more about this in the climate change unit. Um, but it is a reality. And even though it's difficult to overhaul fossil fuels and become more of a renewable economy, um, it is something that we have to do. If for no other reason, then we're going to run out. And that's just a reality. Uh, oh, I also wanted to include this one. It's kind of off topic a little bit. But in talking about health and safety, a nuclear power gets a really bad rap. And for good reasons, because nuclear accidents are devastating and they're terrible. And when they happen, you know, it, it gets our attention because of how horrific they can be. But I feel like it distracts us from the fact that more common sources of energy actually are, are more deadly, um, especially coal and oil. Um, the accidents that they can cause, the pollution that they cause, um, all sorts of negative things that affect health. And so when we think about, well, this one energy source is safer than another, I feel like it's important to at least um, look more into the data. And that's all. All right, and summary, describe the trends of energy consumption, and that is all.